We all wear clothes now, but we didn't always. In fact, our ancestors went around naked for a very long time before developing any sort of clothing fashion sense. Look no further than the human baby. I am not aware of a single instance of a baby being born with a meager garment or any other sort of clothing. And so it was with our distant ancestors. When did we start to wear clothing? It turns out that we can now figure this out. And the way of figuring out is so cool and unexpected that you have to hear about it. What amazes me is how much of history isn't really gone. There are remnants of it still there if only we can figure out how to unlock it and how to use it. Useful information remains. So I'm going to tell you the story of how scientists have figured out when we started to wear clothes. Now clothing, animal skins, fabrics don't fossilize, don't preserve well. So the method is going to have to be indirect because we have no direct physical evidence of these things. Solving this mystery is going to require looking at the problem from another angle and necessarily indirectly. The central insight rests on the fact that there is a particular human louse, singular for lice, that lives in clothing. Before we had clothing, there was no louse that was specifically adapted to live in it. Human beings used to be covered in a thick body hair, like our chimpanzee and gorilla cousins. When we lost that hair about a million years ago, the louse was forced into a narrow geographical range in the body, the head, the hair. But suddenly, when we wore clothing, a new opportunity arose for lice. They had a new niche that was opened, and lice were only too eager to take advantage of that opportunity. So head lice diverged into two types, the head louse and the clothing louse. So once you realize that these two types of lice diverged, the rest is easy. You use a molecular clock. Now you might think that you can get anything on Amazon, but you actually can't go and get a molecular clock. A molecular clock is not an item for sale. It utilizes the fact that when two life forms diverge, some of their important molecules, especially proteins and DNA, mutate randomly over time in a steady way and develop differences in those molecules over time. And the measure of their differences is a rough indication of how long it's been since they separated. So in this case, scientists looked at the differences in the DNA of the head louse and the clothing louse. And what they found is that clothing lice diverged from head lice about 170,000 years ago. So when some of our ancestors traveled north into colder regions and left Africa maybe 100,000 years ago in a migration that didn't ultimately take, and then left Africa 50 to 70,000 years ago in a migration that would ultimately populate the globe, they were already equipped with one of the technologies that would make it possible to survive and exploit colder environments. And no doubt they dressed their babies with this new technology too. I should mention that when human beings entered Eurasia, not a tropical place, there were other ancient populations different from us already living there. Neanderthals, Denisovans, maybe Homo erectus, the Flores Island Hobbit people. I'll be talking about them no doubt in another video. But presumably they need a way to keep themselves warm as well. But clothing don't preserve to give direct evidence and sadly their lice died with them. So we may never know whether they wore clothing or how they kept their bodies warm. But thanks to an ingenious look at the genetics of lice, we now know when we started wearing clothing. And that is pretty fascinating. Be sure to subscribe, and thanks a lot for watching.